And now, picking up right where we left off with the rank theorem, we basically just need a definition. Um, regrettably, Zoom will only create 20 slides for me. Let's go back to frame 10 and just start deleting stuff and use that as a fresh start. We've talked almost exclusively about columns of matrices. Um, and that is sort of dating back to the fact that when I first introduced vectors, I said that we want to work almost exclusively with column vectors. But if you have a matrix, the rows of that matrix are vectors. So you can ask about the rows of the matrix. And just like we have a column space, The span of the rows of A is called the row space. And this is kind of unintuitive, maybe, but even though we're suddenly working with rows, we're still not going to work with row vectors. If I wanted to talk about the row space of A, I'd say that it's the span of the vector 1, 2, and the vector 4, 5, because those are the rows. But I would continue to write these vectors as column vectors. We now, by the way, have a justification for this. Um, I've said that if two sets are isomorphic, then from a vector space point of view, they're identical. Well, the transpose is an isomorphism. So the set of column vectors is isomorphic to the set of row vectors. They're identical from a vector space point of view. We get to just pick whichever one we like best and pretty much ignore the rest. So finally, eight weeks in, we get our justification for doing that. Theorem. To find a basis of the row space of A, put A I call this a theorem, I guess it's more of a process, but put A into reduced row echelon form and select the non-zero row. 
And you've got to be careful here because, um, because of course the row space and the column space seem like very similar spaces, but we're doing something different here. Say we have one, two, um, three, one. And we want a basis of the row space. According to what I've just said, we can put a into reduced row echelon form or just drag to the row echelon form for that matter. Let's see, we're multiplying the first row by negative three, adding it to the second row. So negative six plus one, negative five. I usually go reduced row echelon form. It doesn't really matter. We could stop here if we wanted to. And then, according to this theorem, these rows are a basis of the row space. And that's different from what you do with the column space. For the column space, you do perform Gaussian elimination, but you're only doing it to identify the pivot columns. Then once you've identified the pivot columns, you go back to the original matrix. You'll notice that with the row space, I did not go back to the original matrix. I selected the non-zero rows of the reduced matrix. Definition. The dimension of the row space of A is called the rank of a. So that word rank that appeared in the rank theorem theorem the dimension of the column space of A equals the dimension of the row space of A. So this comes immediately from the fact that the dimension of the row space. What did I say to do? I said to put A into reduced row echelon form and select the non-zero rows. So it's the number of non-zero rows after 
Dr. Rowe. Reduction. Hard as it may be to believe, I think we are going to make it. So the number of non-zero rows is the number of pivot positions. Because the pivot position is the first non-zero entry in a row. So every non-zero row has exactly one first entry. Every column can only have one pivot position in it. So this is the number of pivot columns and the number of pivot columns, let me find this, the number of pivot columns is the dimension of the column space. So the dimension of the row space and the dimension of the column space are the same. And the rank theorem is just what I have here, except that since the dimension of the no space and the, sorry, the dimension of the row space and the column space are the same. I can go from the dimension of the column space to the dimension of the row space. And then I can justify the name of this theorem. Remember that the dimension of the row space was what we called the rank. And there is the rank theorem. We will pick up on Thursday. I said we could do it without going late, and we did. So a very small section. There will be homework on all of this. It's not open yet, but it will be open by the end of the day.